If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. This is Radio Random Network. Find us on the web at www.radiorandomnetwork.com. You're backstage with hashtag RDM on Radio Random Network. Now, here's the host, hashtag RDM, Russell Devin McLean. All right, welcome to Backstage with hashtag RDM. I am Russell Devin McLean. Thank you so much for joining us tonight live on Spreaker and iHeartRadio. Have a great show lined up for you tonight. Got a couple of great guests. I have uh, some good news for all the Android users out there. And also, I'm going to tell you all about the 2016 11th Annual People's Choice Podcast Awards. But before we get to all that, tonight, for all you fans of the horror movie genre, I'm going to be talking with screenwriter and director of the featured film, DK, Mr. Joseph Wartner Channing, and I hope I didn't botch his name, and I probably did. We'll find out here in a few minutes when he calls in and we talk about all his latest projects, including DK. And I'm also going to be talking with Southern songstress Miss Donica Knight about her latest album, You Can't Buy a Southern Girl. But before we move on, as I said a few minutes ago, I want to tell you all about the 11th Annual People's Choice Podcast Awards. Uh, and we kind of need your help. So if you enjoy this show, I want to encourage you to please nominate backstage with hashtag RDM before May 1st. And it, and it, and it means a lot to us if you can do as far as every nomination counts. You can find out more at podcastawards.com or by visiting the, the links in today's show notes and descriptions. Uh, great news for all the uh, podcast uh, Android listeners out there. You can now listen to our weekly shows here at Radio Random Network via Google Play. That's right. They are live. You can also find that link in the show notes. You could talk about, you know, the show notes and everything else. But if you just go to RadioRandomNetwork.com, you'll find the show notes for today's uh, show. And they'll have all of the links we talk about on today's show in the show notes at RadioRandomNetwork.com. Very easy, uh, very simple. Tried to do it as simple as possible for everyone out there. All right. With all of that said, guys, it's time for the song of the day. And the song of the day is from Anna Knight's brand new album, Can't Buy a Southern Girl. The name of the song is My Love Ain't No Guys. Take a listen, and you can tell me what you think about the song by tweeting us at RussMCLA2012. That's R-U-S-S-M-C-L-A-2012 on Twitter. Use the hashtag BS Live. Tell me what you think about Love Ain't No Prize, or you can jump over here at the chat room at Sprinker as well and tell us what you think. With all of that said, here it is, Miss Danica Knight. My love, My love ain't, ain't no prize. prize. My love ain't a we'll prize. be right back. Can buy this woman. My love ain't a prize. And I reckon I know. Cause mama taught me so. Can I buy it? My love ain't a prize. I'll be an open book. If you treat me right. But my love ain't a prize. No, you sure can't buy
Thank you for bringing us on our backstage with hashtag RDM on the Radio Random Network. I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Donica Knight. Is that name right, Donica? Yeah, it's Donica. Donica. I say it's kind of like that, but got an O in front of it. Yeah. Thing, so it's Donica. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, bring the album out. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that album. What what inspired you uh, to, to write the latest album, uh, Southern Girl? Yeah, well, about two albums. This is my second album. The first one that I put out, there was only one song on there that I wrote. And so what inspired me to do this album is I just decided that I write every song and make all the instrumentation. And um, it just be my second album. But it is that I want to say. So this whole record, I'm proud to say that I wrote it. And, um, it all came from my heart. And I'm just so grateful for you playing in front of prize and for you playing my music and let me talk about it and be able to do what it is that I love doing. Who was your inspirations um, as a country music artist uh, when you decided to do this? Who, who are some of the people you were looking up to at the time? Yeah, well, my favorite vocalist is Bonnie Ray. I have to give her a shout out because um, I just love her voice. I love that she's bluesy rock and uh, she sticks to her voice and who she is. Um, but I'm also inspired by Shania Twain. I love performances and I love watching her on stage. Uh, in Alabama, I'm um, using almost so I, I definitely love her in rock and heart for the Rolling Stones and Leonard Skinner um, and a good Southern rock band. It was a Southern Girl's Heart. Mm -hmm. And that one was produced in Nashville. And I was real fortunate to work with a, a man and took me to a bunch of folks in Kennedy. And it led me to where I And that album. Uh, was real country to hear a lot of more because I love me some Pat Klein uh, and I love some Hank Williams Sr. But I also love rock and roll, and so uh, hopefully you'll hear some of that rock in this new record and maybe you'll hear it surprise. Yes, indeed. You also have a chance to perform uh, at Billy's, is that correct, for the Chris Cow birthday bash? I sure did. I like that Billy's. I've never been to that venue before, and when I walked in, it was huge. It was a big old place. There were so many stages, and lo and behold, right when we walk in, there Mr. Ted Morgan just cracked in and sound checking with his band, and I got to watch him do his sound check for about an hour, and he was cutting up with the fellows, and I got to hang out with him for a little bit and get to know him a little better, and they were sweet to me and uh, let me share the stage with them, and play my music and they played my song Blood on My Feet which is a bonus track to my Can't Buy a Southern Girl album and it just was released on the 8th of April and I waited to the 8th because that is Chris Kyle's birthday and Chris Kyle is the guy from American Sniper yes. and uh, his wife Taya Kyle I heard her speak last year and she inspired some of the lyrics for the Blood on My Feet song and she just loved it and asked me to come sing it at her husband's birthday bash. And I was just tickled pink and honored to be able to go to Texas and do that. That's awesome. So you're, you're now, I guess, pretty much kind of touring around. You got, you did that. You did the Gillies thing and 
uh, new album coming out. I mean, what's what if if it wasn't for music, uh, what would you be doing? Can you, can you see yourself doing anything else? You know, there's so many different things growing up that dream, I always dreamed to be a professional singer, and that was my first dream. But at one point, I thought I would be in dentistry because I had braces for six and a half years. And uh, lo and behold, after six and a half years of metal all up in my mouth, I got hit by softball and knocked them all out. Uh, so I had another year and a half of fixing teeth. Um, and, and I end up having to get uh, veneers. But I did think about going into dentistry once. Uh, but lo and behold, you got to know a lot of chemistry, and I don't like chemistry. But I don't mind. Uh, I like being able to connect to people, and I knew that if I did something in dentistry, I've done just about everything that there is for teeth. So I could tell the patient how it would feel if they were going to have a root canal or if they were going to uh, <laughs> get veneers or have braces or have their gums cut, stuff like that. Yes, indeed. Well, you're probably that. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you're you're originally from Alabama, correct? Yep, born and raised, and I'm proud to say I'm a full blooded Alabama girl. That's awesome. And we can tell with your with your accent, which we're here in Louisiana, so I guess football terms we're we're enemies or or, or something like that. I don't know. I don't really keep up with the football aspect of everything, but I think there's a big rivalry there between uh, Alabama, and Louisiana, but. Um, yeah, I know. I know. I had some onions, and the onions just started coming up for a second. Uh, but I'm an Auburn girl. But I do know uh, our rivalry is Alabama, and I know Alabama doesn't like LSU. So that's yeah. uh, y'all's rivalry. Rivalry is with Alabama, but that ain't me. I'm the Tiger. Uh, cool. And y'all are Tigers too, so yeah. we like that. That's and I awesome. love being in Louisiana. I went there not too long ago, and uh, I went uh, alligator hunting. Or, or we went out on a boat and started looking at alligators, and it was so much fun. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. With, with, with all I of that. I play from time to time in New Orleans, and that's always a lot of fun. Well, really, well, what do you usually play in New Orleans? Oh, heck if I remember. Um, I played a couple different venues downtown. Um Something called the Sisters, Two Sisters, okay. Cafe, or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, and then every now and then, I have done a few college shows at LSU. Um, so I have done that one as well. But that was probably two years ago that I went to LSU for a college show. It's pretty awesome. Now, with all of that said, Danica, you talked about uh, sharing the stage with uh, Craig Morgan and, and many others. Did they share any advice with you that you use in your uh, your daily um, life? Yeah, actually. Um, James Johnson became a good friend of mine, and I'm very grateful for him. And uh, We're from the same hometown, and so he, he's got my back, you know, because we're from the same hometown, and we both have passions for music. Um, but he's the one that kind of led me to the rabbit trail of writing all these songs myself. And uh, he really inspired and encouraged me to go out and to do an album that you can officially call Your Baby, is <laughs> what he said. He right, said, right. To make your album that's your baby, and, and by golly, I did. It took me a while, but I, I got to it, and I'm proud of it. And uh, it ain't going back now. I'm going to have to make a bunch of babies, make it a bunch <laughs> of albums, because I had a blast. Yes, indeed. With all that said, is there any advice you could share with any uh, up-and-coming uh, singer or songwriters that maybe want to follow in your footsteps? Yeah, well, just to, as long as you love what you do, and if you're calling and your heart is in music, then continue at it. Someone told me before that it's not hard work, it's just working hard. And I believe that was my full heart, that you got to work hard at what you want. And um, with perseverance and luck, you just might get there. 
Yes, indeed. That's some great advice. With all of that said, go check out Danica Knight at DonicaKnight.com. You can also check her out on Twitter at Donica Knight and on Facebook. And, uh, you can find all those links in today's show notes. Donica, it was a joy talking with you, and uh, I wish you all the luck in the world. And uh, Hey, I, I thank to you. you. Again, it's a pleasure uh, talking to you. Exactly. And, and we will um, we'll catch you down the road. All right. You say stay safe in that weather there. And hey, everybody, I got this new video coming out too for my song, Acting Like a Lady. And so you got to make sure to, to be on the lookout for that on my Facebook page. Yes, indeed. Be sure, be on the lookout for it. And we will definitely be sharing it on our end. Donica, have safe travels and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Later, honey. Bye bye. That was Donica Knight, uh, recording artist. Uh, she's from Alabama. She's on her rise. Very country, very laid back, just like I like it. It seems like everything is kind of panned out right now. A while ago, I was fighting to get on the line with uh, the screenwriter, director of the movie Decay, uh, Mr. Joseph uh, Wharton Chankney. And and what I'm going to do is we're going to try to get him back on. Guys, I do apologize for all the delays tonight. Apparently, there's been a little bad weather going on around here, so we're um, we're experiencing it, and, and it's hard to, uh, you know, it makes things difficult sometimes. But with all of that said, this week, I'm listening to a great podcast that I found by searching Pod and Family on Twitter. The name of the show is Pat and Jason Have a Podcast. Find out more about Pat and Jason at patandjason.com. Check out the ad for the Pat and Jason Have a Podcast. And we'll be right back. This is Jason from Pat and Jason Have a Podcast. Every season, we have a different movie theme, and in season one, our theme is famous movie franchises. Franchises like Rocky, Star Wars, The Matrix, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, and more. We rank and review the best and the worst. And we want you to pick our theme for season two. So subscribe today to Pat and Jason Have a Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite app, and follow us on Twitter at Pat and Jason. Tell us what movies we should be talking about and send us your reviews to be included on the show. All right, guys, as I said a while ago when we had started, I want to tell you all about the 11th Annual People's Podcast Awards. It's, uh, and I need your help, you know. So if you enjoy this show, I want to encourage you to please nominate Backstage with hashtag RDM before May 1st. It only takes a couple of minutes, and it means a lot to us here at the Radio Random Network. Every nomination counts. You can find out more at podcastawards.com or by visiting the links in today's show notes at www.radiorandomnetworker.com. All right, guys. A while ago, I was also talking about the Android podcast listeners. I got great news for all the Android users out there. You can now listen to Radio Random Network's weekly shows via Google Play. That's right. And you can find that link as well as all the links talked about in today's show at RadioRandomNetwork.com. Now, y'all, it's time. I did it a while ago. It was a song of the day, but I was the first guest we were supposed to have. He's a screenwriter and director. You know, everything got kind of jumbled up, but I'm going to try and get him back on. And while I'm doing that, here is a clip from his featured film, Decay. We'll be right back. up straight. A young man's posture is his compliment to God. We're going to keep doing this as long as it takes. Do you know what those troop leaders feed on? Huh? The innocence of little boys. Snap out of it! Mother didn't raise you to be a little bitch. What am 
I gonna do with you? Where is open up? Okay, germs and disease. Sometimes it's better to be alone. All right, guys, as promised, he was supposed to be my first guest here at Backstage with Hashtag RDM tonight. But due to the technical difficulties, we were unable to connect earlier. But it's okay because he's on here with us now, and we are live right now with the screenwriter and director of the featured film, DK. I'm talking to Mr. Joseph Wartney Chansey. Did I say your name right? Close. It's Wartner Cheney. <laughs> Wartner Cheney. Lord have mercy. Wartner Almost Cheney. had it. <laughs> it's a Almost lot of letters. I'll tell you what, I'll just call you Joseph and we'll, be, we'll, we'll be on the safe side. You know, we'll be able to get it right. Well, Joseph, how Sounds are you doing good. this evening, friend? I'm great. How are you? We're, we're doing great other than the technical difficulties, but thanks to uh, our great engineer here, uh, we got everything back on a roll and, uh, we're live with you now, and uh, let's go ahead. That's and, uh, awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about the movie, uh, DK, and for all the horror fans out there that are listening, for uh, this is the movie for you, okay? I just want to get that out of the way first and foremost. <laughs> uh, give us the inspiration behind the movie, uh, Joseph. You know, for me, I, I really wanted to try to do something that wasn't just kind of a, a cliche a traditional genre piece. I really wanted to explore loneliness and kind of the pain of love and that sort of thing. And really that's what this movie is for me is not necessarily a monster and jumping out and, and scaring everybody, but kind of the, the psychological horror that, that happens inside of loneliness. Gotcha. Well, you know, what was the casting process like? I mean, did you already have uh, people in mind? Yeah. When I wrote it, you know, I um, have a bit of a background in, in theater and, and Jackie Hoffman and Lisa Howard were, were two people that the parts were kind of written for, and they, they have such unique personalities, and I think that they work so well. And then the, the main character, Rob Zabrecki, is just so incredible. And it really it took a lot of trying to, to search. I mean, he's somebody that I had in mind certainly right away, but we weren't sure if you would, would be interested because this is such a demanding role. So right, he's right. in pretty much every frame of the entire movie. But he... Um, he was really into it right away, and we hit it off, and it was just wonderful. That's awesome. Now, with that said, I mean, the finished product of the movie, which, I mean, it's an award-winning film now, or winning, uh, was it the Denver? Um, it won an award the at the— uh, Award. Exactly. Yeah the, yeah, the Denver International Film Festival. We were very fortunate, and <laughs> they kind of got it. You know, this is a movie that— is, I, I realize, you know, it demands a lot from, from the audience, and it's not immediately accessible. And, and I think the people that get it really seem to get it, which is just such an exciting thrill for us. And, and the, the jury in Denver really seemed to, to get it, and they, they gave us the, the True Grid Award, which we're very humbled by. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, with that said, after, you know, you, the final product of the film, the screening and everything, was you happy with the product, uh, final uh, product, or would you go back and change something? You know, I, I think being a perfectionist, there's a, a lot we learned, and there's a lot I would always want to tweak and change. And, and so there, there definitely reached a point where we just had to kind of let it be its thing and, and take any lessons learned onto the next project. But I'm so proud of everything that everyone put into it. I mean, people were really just gave it their, their all and, and kind of bled for the movie. It's like literally, it was, it's pretty special when, when you get a family that's just into the project for the passion. Yes, indeed. Now, look off the off the uh, the beaten path here uh, of decay. I, I was looking at some of the stuff that you, you've done in the past, which uh, you have a lot of great credits to your name. But I noticed you have a lot of credits for TV shows and films with uh, Spider Cam. Uh, given as uh, give us some insight on on what exactly a Spider Cam is, because that's the first time I've ever heard of that. It, it's this really cool, cool motion control camera 
um, infrastructure, and um, it's a program- programmable camera system that, that, that some people that were way <laughs> smarter than I ever am are kind of put this together, and and it, it filled this need. They they started um, with like um, AI and Minority Report and Stuart Little and a lot of these films, and then it went on to to Spider Man and. I was just really lucky to effectively be the no Callan guy in the room, but just got to be around some pretty exciting big shoots and see everything that everyone did. It, it was really thrilling. That's awesome. Now, before we go here this evening, I, I want to ask you real quick, is there any advice you can give any uh, up and coming uh, directors or screenwriters or, or anybody out there that may want to follow in your footsteps? I would say just get on as many sets as you possibly can. That's, Absolutely, what I kind of did is just followed the, the passion and and just got to be around it, which was it's really exciting to be on a movie set and you get to really kind of get the the ebb and flow of the way everything works and the way decisions get made and being around that, I think that it it's not only inspiring but so informative to to see. I mean, you can learn a whole bunch in a book, but then actually being on set, it's such a thrilling place to be. That's awesome. With all of that said, Joseph, thank you so much for joining me this week. Uh, I'm glad I'll, I'm glad I, I had a chance to at least talk to you tonight. Hopefully, we can get you scheduled back here <laughs> in the near future. We got a little bit more that time. Sounds awesome. But uh, with all of that said, it's uh, DK uh, Movie or is it DKAProject.com? That's the uh, the website to find out more about uh, the featured film. Correct. And you're also on Twitter. That's correct. That's awesome. Yep. We'll share all of um, those links. Go ahead. Oh yeah, it's a DK Project is a, on, on Twitter. Yeah, it's it's pretty great, and it, it's being distributed by Uncourt. Yes, it. So be sure and check that out. You can check out the uh, trailer and all that as well. That is that's pretty much our time this week on uh, backstage with hashtag RDM Joseph. Once again, thank you so much. We're going to try to get you on here uh, next week. Apologize for all the technical difficulties, but uh, thank everyone for joining me, and uh, we'll talk at you next week right here same place same time radio random thank you